Welcome to Tile Basics Session 6, Calculations and Peak Discrimination. In Session 5, we went through uh, you know, the clear data actions, putting test info onto the graph, and the overall graph setup and graphing details. Now we're going to get into doing math on the actual trace versus the limit line. And the first thing we're going to do as we jump in here right off the bat is we're going to create a limit. So in the data tab, we can add data and we'll make this, I call limits, I just literally call them limit underscore and then whatever the name is. In this case, it's just going to be test. The limit for radiated emissions in this case is dB microvolts per meter. That's an optional field that we can uh, put in for the, for the operator's benefit. And in the comments, it'll just be the test limit. Now on the source tab, you want your limits to be presets. So when you select the preset, you'll see that you get these different options. We can make a simple limit, which is basically just a straight line, or we can use what's called the bands feature. Now the straight line limit's pretty simple. I'll just leave it at 50, um, change this step size to one. So it'll just create a line between two points. And if I generate this and put it on the graph, we can add it to the data and we can say limit test, add, we'll move it up so it appears first in the legend and then change it. I always make the limits light red and this is the test limit. This will be the comment that shows up in the legend. And now we have a red line across the screen. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and add it to the vertical graph as well. Make it light red, call it test limit. And there we go. It's on the on both graphs in the same place. So in this limit though, we'll create a more advanced limit. That's a straight line limit that we've just displayed. What we can also do is go into the bands and the, and the bands feature allows us to put discrete lines of information. We can leave gaps in, or we can put a continuous line. In this case, we'll create something similar to a CISPR limit, like a CISPR class B that's relaxed for a three meter test instead of a 10 meter test. So what we can do is add a line. The start frequency will be 30 M for megahertz. The start value will be 40. Stop frequency will be 230 M for megahertz. And the stop value is also 40. The second line, we're going to step up to 47. Now, the key to remember here is the when you're doing math on a limit line, the way the math works in tile, if two frequency points are identical out to hertz, then it will default, the math will default to the lower amplitude of the two points. So when you make a step like this, what we want to do for the next frequency point is go 230.000001 M for megahertz. And even though it doesn't show up, anywhere because of rounding errors for the display, it is in fact different now. And so the value is 230 to one gig at 47. And if we generate this and look at the values, we can see that we now have a point list. And when we hit OK, that processes and we can go to the graph and see that now we have this line that comes across at 40 and at 230 megahertz steps up to 47. So now we have a graph, a limit line, we've got test data, and we want to work on, one, we need to correct that data to be, you know, the final value. And two, we wanna do math on the data to see how far it is above the limit. So two other things that I'll create just generically um, that in a regular test in your lab, you would load in, you would load in antenna factors or cable losses. What we'll do here is we'll just create um, a CF, a correction factor 
for the path loss, you know, the cable from the antenna to the wall of the chamber and then from the wall of the chamber to the receiver, right? So of the path loss and the source of it will be a preset and we'll just, we'll start at 30 megahertz, we can start at one and we have the ability to create an, ex, an exponential line. So in this box where it says constant, rather than stepping, we can do a multiply and make the step 1.005. And this is interesting. Now we can go to 300 data points. And when we click generate and go to the values, we can scroll down and look and see that this cable now from 30 megahertz to one gigahertz, the value of the loss of this cable changes from one dB to 4.4 dB. It's not exactly what you might see in your lab, but it's a fair, a fair representation of loss increasing as frequency increases. So that can be our path loss value. And then for the sake of the antenna, we'll just create a generic uh, 6 dB antenna. And most of the antennas are calibrated in dB per meter. And we'll just say antenna factor. It will also be a preset. And this will just create a 6 dB factor. We won't worry with, um, you know, doing anything fancy. So now we've got some, some data items that we can absolutely utilize to correct the data. And the way that we do this, the way we correct the data is we would do it using an equation. And there's a data type for that. The source is equation. We will call this EQ for equation. And then I use C for corrected data. And then I name it the same as what I'm correcting. So in this case, it's specan underscore H. So the resulting units, when you take dB microvolts, and you multiply that by dB per meter, you get dB microvolts per meter. And this is the corrected horizontal data. So in the equation now, how do we correct the data? Well, we have to add any losses back, right? So we need to take that spec an h and add the path loss and then also add the antenna factor cf underscore antenna if we hit okay and we calculate this now and when we're in the data space, we can actually hover over the equation and we can actually click evaluate and it'll create the data and we can actually go look at it. And now we can also go to the horizontal graph and add the corrected data like this and we can actually put in put in a label and we will look at the color. We'll just make it something, something different. We'll make it magenta. And you can see that we now have the corrected data in the graph. And after the session's over, I'll do the same thing for the vertical. I won't you know, duplicate all of these things live on screen, but we'll show you you know, you can copy and paste graphs. In fact, what I can do right now is I can copy this graph or graph, copy the equation and paste it and rename it vertical. And really the only thing that needs to change in the equation is we change this H to a V and evaluate this equation and go to vertical and add it. And then we can call it vertical 
corrected and give it, we'll give it the light magenta as well. So you can see that we have the corrected data. And the points are the same, but the noise floor changes every time you rerun the simulator. So that's why the noise is different. The graphs are slightly different. So this is how we can correct the data. Now, what do we want to find out? What's really key in an emissions test is determining what frequencies are over the limit. What are, what are we looking for? Let's find the frequencies. So we can use another equation and there's multiple steps and ways to do this, but we'll start with what seems intuitively basic. We'll go with EQ over H. We'll call that EQ over H and it'll be points over the limit. Actually, it'll be horizontal points over the limit. And it will be an equation. And so out of this list, what are we really looking for? So now we're looking for corrected data over the limit. So we'll go EQ underscore C underscore spec and underscore H greater than limit underscore test. And I, I like to use the discipline of having the parentheses in here. I like to keep everything parsed. So now if we do EQ over H and evaluate it, we get 26 points. Now that's interesting, right? Because you look at the data and we clearly have five peaks. So let's do ourselves a favor. Let's first turn the uncorrected data off. We can remove it from the graph so it becomes clearer. And we'll go ahead and make the corrected data the base color we had. So now the corrected data will be light blue and we'll just leave it as horizontal data. We don't really need to view the raw data anymore because we have the corrected data. We'll do the same thing in vertical. Just make this guy light green, vertical data. So now we're dealing with the corrected values. So in EQ over H, we did a couple of things that may seem intuitive, but weren't really 100% correct. And what I wanna point out here is when you take a, a comparison and you compare one piece of data to another, the answer is no longer um, a full sweep. It's not, it's not continuous data. So what we need to do is we need to one, make sure that we have it as non-continuous data. And then we can go to the graph and we can plot these points to see what we're looking at here. So we can go to EQ over H, add it to the graph, and now, because it's non-continuous, it's no longer line properties, it's marker properties. So we can go to a shape. Let's just say we want a red X, um, and we'll make, we'll make it big. Size 5 will make it bigger. And we can just say, uh, call these over limit points, OK? We go OK. What we see is all of these points, every place that there was a digital point taken in the sweep, that was over the limit shows up over the limit. So our equation fundamentally worked like it's supposed to, but why does it not just have the five points? And this is why I intentionally did this wrong as I do in my training to then demonstrate the way to do it right. And what we need to do is we need a bandwidth filtering, right? We need to filter the bandwidth so we only wind up with these peaks. And what we have. I'll start another equation and I'll show you a math function that we have. What we have to do that is called S peaks. So we're going to go EQ underscore peaks underscore H. They'll still be dB microvolt per meter on the reading. And it'll be all horizontal 6 dB peaks. Now, why is this important? When we, in order to establish peaks over the limit, we need to qualify the peaks. 
clearly when we look in the graph, all of these peaks on the leading and trailing skirt of the signal, they're, they're not qualified peaks. They're just part of the waveform. They're not the frequency, right? So we need a way to filter that. So what we have in our math, we have math functions in the equations tab. We have one called S peaks. And S peaks, I can put the help manual right on, on the screen here. I can search for S peaks and we can go to it. Oh, I, I skipped right by it, there we go. It is in this page. We'll zoom in on this a little bit. So S peaks, you can see it says the function was designed to walk the data and determine when you had strong signals by comparing the previous and next signals, looking for excursions from the lowest to the highest signals of C. So C2 is a bandwidth and C1 is a constant. And what we're going to do is we're gonna determine these peaks to be six dB peaks. So what we're going to do is take the peaks of the calculated or the corrected, corrected data We're going to assign a 6 dB constant. And then the next feature is the bandwidth. Now this test was run at 120 kilohertz bandwidth because it's a CISPR band test. We can go to the parameters. We can see that the bandwidth is 120 kilohertz. Well, to be able to see the, the first peak and the following peak, we need to be at least double the bandwidth to, to compare data points. So we're going to make this 240 E3, scientific notation for 240 kilohertz. We're going to make sure it's non-continuous data because we're filtering, we're gonna have discrete points. And then we'll go to the data and we will sort the peaks. Now we get 167. Now, depending on how the run random number generator works, I could rerun the sweep and rerun the peaks and get a different number every time. But basically, we're getting, we're filtering those peaks out. So now we have qualified peaks and in the EQ over equation, rather than using unqualified peaks, just throwing all the data at the equation and seeing what's above the limit, let's go with EQ peaks H. We'll put that in and take those peaks that are qualified over the limit. And if I evaluate this and go back to the graph, I now have the five points that were detected to be over the limit. Not all of the up and down the leading edge skirt and trailing edge skirt of the graph. So that's how we just you know filter the data and find the peaks. And this works at any bandwidth. You just have to make sure that your peak discrimination is being done at you know twice the frequency you're at or twice the bandwidth. So we're going to stop here for the end of session six, and we'll pick up more calculations and more data management um, in session seven.